proposition tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, this is very exciting. Um, so there are roughly 2,000 billionaires in a world of about 8 billion people. Half the world's population lives in poverty, deep poverty, uh, living on less than $3 a day. They are exposed to disease, hunger, and violence. It is immoral for a tiny fraction of the world's population to hoard more resources than they and all their heirs combined can ever spend in a lifetime of living in luxury, while half the world has hardly a chance to flourish under the weight of poverty. My argument is not that billionaires are immoral for having accrued their fortunes, or any more immoral than the rest of us. No, they have just been big winners at a deeply immoral game that we, the members of many societies, have allowed. I won't argue for a game where everyone wins, that's boring, uh, but the gap between winners and losers should not be so large and so consequential, where the stakes are so high that it means a life of excess for a few and destitution for many. The game I'm describing is raw, unbridled capitalism with delinquent referees, where the winners get to keep all the spoils, bribe the officials, change the rules, run up the score, and convince the losers that it was a fair game all along. The existence of billionaires is evidence that there's something wrong with our shared norms and that we have neglected our moral duties to each other. To be clear, it is not capitalism or inequality that are immoral. Markets leavened with democracy can have many benefits, and it's fine that some people win due to skill or luck. But this is not what we're talking about here. The problem is too much inequality, which is a threat to social cohesion, democracy, and justice. On nearly every measurable measurement available, the higher the inequality, the higher the problems facing society. It corrodes trust, community, and even our health and well-being. Whether we're using an expansive definition of justice, the greatest good for the greatest amount of people, or a limited concept, not taking more than you deserve, billionaires threaten justice and community at a time when these shared norms are desperately needed. Specifically, I want to highlight how inequality threatens both democracy and freedom. First, democracy. The higher the inequality, the higher the threat to democracy. Louis Brandeis said, we can have democracy or we can have great wealth concentrated in the hands of a few. We cannot have both. By most accounts, the United States has one of the highest levels of inequality, also home to the world's most um, billionaires. In 2018 alone, $3.5 billion was spent just on political lobbying in the US Congress. Hoarding billions, therefore, doesn't just allow you to buy luxury goods, it allows you to buy votes, laws, and legislators. And what are, what are the things that billionaires are lobbying for? Mostly tax breaks and deregulation. Monopolists lobby against antitrust enforcement. Banks lobby against risk regulation. Polluters lobby against environmental regulations. And private companies lobby against public services. This is antisocial rent-seeking, and it harms the majority. The very wealthy lobby for tax cuts and tax loopholes. Thus, wealth leads to political power, which leads to even more wealth. The opposite is also true. Disadvantage self perpetuates sorry, I'm on the clock. Um, disadvantage self-perpetuates. The desires of the wealthy are heated by the political structure, and the voice of the poor is drowned out. The wealthy have no interest in social safety nets, public schools, and public health care. These are the things that get cut when inequality is high, and this is exactly what's happened in the United States. Over the span of time, as deregulation, privatization, monopolization, and trickle-down economics enabled the creation of unprecedented fortune and business empires, public resources have shrunk. Public schools, housing, poverty aid, and even services like the public post office, where Anand's wallet showed up, um, have been discredited and defunded. This, the result is that while the rich have gotten even richer, the majority of the public have more debt, inadequate shelter, shelter food insecurity, wage stagnation, underfunded schools, and unaffordable health care. This is a direct result of lobbying. It's not just direct lobbying, but the very wealthy also fund a propaganda industry that promotes a neoliberal ideology that justifies their extravagant fortunes. They share their ideology through right-wing think tanks, foundations, newspapers, and television, ne television networks. And it's working. Thanks to decades of storytelling, many people believe that anyone can get rich if they just work hard, that billionaires deserve their money, and that poverty is a matter of personal flaws as opposed to in institutional delinquencies. This is salt on wounds. Not only do the poor suffer, but they are convinced to feel shame about their own poverty. The poor have thus been persuaded to vote for billionaire-friendly policies. One might even argue that the worldwide political, ecological, and cultural crises have in fact been caused by the unprecedented inequality in wealth and the neoliberal dogmas used to justify it. Two, 
Inequality threatens individual freedom and autonomy. Vast fortunes create social and political power. And there's, if there's one lesson we can learn from history, it is that power always seeks self-preservation first and foremost. Frederick Douglass remarked, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. Thus, fortune and power propagate like compounding interest um, over time and tip the scales until the game becomes rigged. The winners can maintain their dominance across generation by hoarding resources and opportunity. Class becomes rigid and inescapable. The higher the inequality, the higher the likelihood that kids will inherit their life outcomes and have no autonomy to change them. Some kids are born on third base and others will never step up to the plate. In an environment of vast inequality, the most important decision a child can make to better their life outcome is to choose their parents wisely. Advice to the discerning unborn. In addition to class, be sure to pick the right country, race, and gender. In America, a black child is much more likely than a white child to grow up in deep poverty, attend an underfunded school, not go to college, and end up in prison. Meanwhile, the children of the wealthy have to try really hard not to be wealthy themselves. If we're going to call this state of life determinism freedom, we're going to have to significantly narrow the definition. The list of billionaires reflects this history of stagnant social power and racial and gendered hierarchies. There are only a few African-American billionaires. One just got added, Jay-Z, this week, so that brings it to a handful. <laughs> Fine. Um, none, are, none are Native American. There are no untouchables that are billionaires. There are about 200 on the list that are women. Nearly all of them, by my count, are heirs of an empire. Men from historically dominant races make up the majority of this list, reflecting, of course, the history of colonization, empire, patriarchy, and exploitation. This is not a meritocracy. What about when billionaires give away their money? Aid to the poor is not an, an adequate stand-in for justice and a fair social contract. Allowing billionaires to accumulate and then decide where and how to give their money is a transfer of freedom and autonomy from the poor to the wealthy. Why should they get to allocate the world's resources? By making these distributional decisions, bil um, billionaire charity shifts power from public governments by the people and for the people to private individuals. There are good and charitable billionaires who fund the building of wells in the Middle East, micro-lending in Bangladesh, mosquito nets in Africa. These projects surely improve lives, but they do nothing to address the root problems of the global poor, which is a history of colonialism, war, corruption, and resource extraction. Former empires and the new corporate empires give foreign aid even as these empires have long plundered the land, installed dictators, crushed movements for sovereignty, all in the pursuit of large fortunes. It's like the bully who comes in and takes your lunch and wants to be congratulated for giving you some scraps. Many of the world's largest fortunes are similarly implicated in causing harm first and giving alms later. It would be better if we could stop the bully from taking the lunch in the first place. And for that, we need democracy and meaningful freedom. And this is exactly what's, what's threatened with high inequality. If we want to fix poverty, we must give the poor equal political power to determine their own fate. Benevolence from kings, lords, dictators, or billionaires is still a form of tyranny when it impedes freedom. Mosquito nets and charity are nice, but sovereignty, freedom, and self-rule are better. As for billionaires, it's great that they're giving away their money. It's not enough. Democracy requires a progressive system of taxation, and justice requires an egalitarian distribution of goods. The existence of billionaires in any society indicates a high level of inequality, and like a dead canary in the coal mine, it is a sign that something is deeply wrong. Thank you. Yeah.